The motivation for doing this video was last night, late, I was working in the studio, and a friend of mine who's also a composer called me and said, can you show me some things in Vienna? Because he's using other libraries, and he's thinking about buying some some other libraries to augment what he has. And so I, I took him through my Vienna workflow, some of my Vienna workflow, and I played him a few patches from orchestral strings one and two, so these aren't synchronized. These are going to be patches that are relatively dry, uh, but we're going to add reverb to them and do all of that and mix them. But we're going to build them out. Now, uh, this is a fun time of the year because it's Outlands Festival, and I live right by the Outlands Festival. So uh, I am... It's one of those weekends where I don't get a lot done, not because I'm at the festival like a normal person. I'm actually, it's just too loud since I actually like literally live right next to the place. So I don't know who's playing. Uh, although one year it was kind of cool. I walked out of my house and went and saw The Who. And that was pretty, pretty amazing, you know, to do that, to say, oh, I'm going to make a cup of coffee and or a cup of tea, appropriate, and then see The Who. Oh, by the way, there's a buy me a coffee link in the video. So if you are so moved based on uh, any kind of appreciation you might have for what I'm doing here, uh, if you are so moved, please buy me a coffee. In any event, let's talk about it. Let's get out of that default logic universe and let's go into the Vienna universe. And so I'm going to use Vienna Instrument Pro as a standalone instance. So I'm not going to load it into Ensemble Pro. I'm just going to load it into uh, by itself. And so we have it here, Vienna Instruments Pro. There we go. And uh, I have been using this software for many, many years. Um, I've been using this interface probably for 15 years at this point. Uh, and it's, again, one of my favorite uh, things to um, use. And in some of my other videos, I've demonstrated velocity switching using uh, Vienna Instruments Pro on the EWI. So that's that wind instrument that I play. But okay, here we go. So let's talk about patch building. So patch building is one of those things that you can do to create a more customized experience as a as a composer and I'll just get into it so we have string patches here we have the matrix we have the presets and I'm not going to use the presets and I'm not going to use the matrix I'm actually just going to use the straight up patch and I'm going to use for this patch I'm going to use uh, violas and I'm going to load in a uh, uh, let's see how we're going to do this I'm going to load in a um, a sustain. Okay. And then I'm going to play the sustain for you. So I'm going to go to the advanced tab and the sustain sounds like that. Very dry. So it's got that very very, very dry. So let's liven that up a little bit with our friend trusty mirror. So we're going to bring in the mirror plugin. All right, Vienna mirror, and we're going to use mirror pro. So we're going to load that up. Come on mirror. There we go. And we'll just use one of the default big halls and we'll use the Glister Sol stall hall. So it sounds like this now. All right. So I might experiment with some other string sections, uh, but for now, we're going to use um, viola. So we have a sustain, no vibrato. However, what if we wanted to create a situation where we had a bit of a dynamic inflection in that, where we went from soft, slightly louder to soft? But we didn't want to hear just that patch, we wanted to hear the sustain patch. So we wanted to bring them together 
uh, we can do that. And so we're going to go to dynamics next, and we're going to go to uh, piano forte piano. And we're going to use a long six-second rise and fall. So this is a decrescendo crescendo. Now, we're not hearing it because we have to use our slot crossfading function. So let's do that next. And we have to click that box for it to work. So here we go. One more time. So I'll play that again, soft. Quiet. So now we're going to pull these two things together. We're going to combine using the slot crossfading function. You can hear that dynamic change. So let's get a little fancier. Let's add on the front of that, let's add a detache sample. So within the player, you're only seeing in the setup, in this cell, you're just seeing this sample. And that sample appears here, but you can also connect it to this as well. And in the mixer, that would be 1B. So we have 1A. And if we go into advanced, there's some more functionality here. Uh, mixer is here. And these are both connected. So we got the voicing. So there's some interesting ways that we can mix and combine. So now using the slot crossfade function. It's a very subtle effect. So let's do, uh, let's do something else. Let's add a short detache accent with violas to the front of this. So now we have, you can hear that accent. And you can really hear that. So if we take these out. It's the detache. You can add a little more of that sustain in now. Nah. And that gives it so much character. So let's keep going. Uh, let's add in a dynamic tremolo. So we're going to add a tremolo with a, uh, a two second, a two or three second. Let's see what we have. We have, okay. Let's use the tremolo. So the tremolo setting we're going to use is going to be in the same spirit of that. So now we have, let's play together. And that's very, very dramatic sounding. So that's building out patches in this way. Now, you know, once you start 
doing this, you can get some really interesting combinations. And so we're going to actually uh, duplicate. Actually, let's just do this. Let's set up another instance of Vienna Instrument Pro. And we're going to use another instance of Mir. Again, uh, if you're having trouble on your computer making this work, you have to have at least um, at least minimally 32 gigs of RAM. That that's what I would personally recommend uh, if you're if you're doing this. And then on this section, we're going to add in another Instrument Pro uh, setting. So we're going to build another one out, and we're going to use a little different articulation. We're going to use. Um, Let's use cellos and let's do the same thing. So we're going to start with uh, short, long, and you can see them here. So let's use a detache. Detache will sound like this on the cellos. <laughs> such a great sound. Uh, so let's use the same idea, but this time let's use a flotando. So again, going into advanced, adding flotando, and this time we're going to use and then let's get even fancier yet. So let's use something else like a Ponticelli, uh, a dynamic Ponticelli. And let's bring these slots together. So we're just going to play the cello for now. So much expression. You know, you can imagine yourself as a maestro, how pretentious is that, standing in front of an ensemble going. So let's bring it together. So much expression out of that. You know, so grinding and just so amazing. So again, using these techniques, uh, and then of course, fixing the imaging issue. So if we take a look at this in mirror, let's take one ensemble and put it over here, and another put it over here. So now it'll be a little, the image will be better. You know, and that's just such a great way to kind of manage that. Give it a little more bite on the low end. 
what we're going to do is add a staccato in the cello section. Or we could do that in, uh, we could put a, you know, uh, let's just use the staccato in the cello section. Again, understanding um, orchestration and how orchestras works also, how an orchestra work is also, how an orchestra works is also important. <laughs> So again, you know, it's a lot, but it gives you so much in terms of expression. It gives you so much in terms of, um, I don't know, brilliance, maybe. Who knows? And of course, record some of this stuff. See what you can come up with. Have fun with it. No outcome. <laughs> on there. So much expression without a whole lot of work, you know? And that kind of sound is really going to inspire you. using the whole spread of the keyboard here. So, you know, turning these things into compositions gets to be really fun when it sounds great. So that's using orchestral strings one and two in a complex uh, multi-cell environment. Boy, did that sound professional. So buy me a coffee if you like the video. You don't have to buy me a coffee. Just subscribe. Got to talk about a soft sell on the channel. I waited till the end to say all that stuff. I said it in the beginning just a little bit. But this is how we sort of get better at this. We um, make more videos and we have a lot more fun. Have a great day. And I'm going to be listening to hopefully not too much feedback from the Outlands Music Festival.